How do the glasses interfaces with AI? What model do they use? You mentioned about Noah. Can you tell us more about this? How does that reflect with the open source model that you are building? Open source is, is foundational for us. All of these technologies are new. They are going to be world changing. I think it's at such an early stage that neither we nor any of us who uses them or builds with them can fathom how they're going to be changing the world over the next five, 10 you know, years and beyond. So at the very get-go, we think it's important for these things to be open, uh, not just inspectable, verifiable, but also modifiable. You know, We think that we're in an era now where developers, customers, they want more reciprocity from the platform provider. And I think in the last you know, 10, 20 years, we've seen a lot of incredible stuff at the Harbor Software and Reg integration, but it's all been closed or it's not been fully open across both software and hardware. And so that's always kept people at arm's length in terms of what they can do and how they can understand what's going on inside the black box. We think that you know in 2024 and beyond, that has to change. And we think that people's appetites are ready for that. To build an ecosystem around that, I think is a way that we can zig where many others who came before us uh, went to zag. And so um, it's a differentiator. We have discussed about open source. Now, open source is a kind of like, a, it's nice, it's noble, uh, and I think it's the way to go. Now, the point is, how do you remain competitive as brilliant labs? We think a lot about this. And the question that we always try to answer for ourselves is, based on how this whole market is shaking out, what parts of the value chain are going to, you know, where will value accrue? And, and what is the opportunity before us in terms of how we can uniquely or you know, uh, have an early mover advantage to capture. For us, our, you know, our, our minds are very much on the device that lives in your life and, and sort of that array of sensors that are perceiving the world as you perceive it. To date has not been done in a way that is, you know, thin and has decent battery life and is affordable. So that's somewhere where we can contribute. In other words, just doing something that looks like glasses. But then the other part of that is not the model layer, because there's other companies like Anthropic and OpenAI and, you know, that are doing that and they're doing it very well. But it's actually a layer of abstraction beyond that. Once you capture the data from the device, how do you process that data to make your interactions with an AI increasingly personal over time? A lot of us watched the movie Her back in the day with Joaquin Phoenix. That's long been with us, this idea of like a, you know, an increasingly personal AI assistant or companion. Wow. This woman is gorgeous. She went to Harvard, she graduated magna cum laude in computer science, and she was on the lampoon. So that means she's funny and she's brainy. Ah, she's fat. Theodore, how long before you're ready to date? What do you mean? I saw in your emails that you'd gone through a breakup recently. Well, you're kind of nosy. Am I? I've gone on dates. Well, then you can go on one with this woman. And then you could tell me all about it. You could kiss her. <laughs> Samantha. What? Wouldn't you? Why not? I don't know. I'd have to see if there was some... I can't believe I'm having this conversation with my computer. You're not. <laughs> You're having this conversation with me. You want me to email her? Uh... You've got nothing to lose. Do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Yes. Email her. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Make, make a reservation someplace great. Yeah? Oh, I've got just the place. Who is that talking? Oh, that's my friend Samantha. Is she a girl? Yeah. I hate women. All they do is cry all the time. But, but no one's yet been able to deliver that. I think it has to be a company that is with you in your life day in, day out in a way that leaves you hands-free and leaves the device having the first row seat or the first person perspective on your life in such a way that it's able to be worn and useful, but also you know have first-hand access to that data. It then puts a company like us in a pretty good position to deliver a deeply personal AI experience. The thing, the last thing I'll say is the key is privacy and trust. That's another sort of thing that's going to be paramount in this new age. And that's something that we're also thinking a lot about is how do we differentiate on that basis? The fact that open source relies on the community, in this case, the development community and the broader aspect of it. What are some examples that people are doing right now with Frame? And maybe how do you, how can people get involved that are listening, for example? We are keen to evolve the way that an app store sort of works. So, you know, today on mobile right now, if you know, tap an app store icon and it opens up, you have a grid of apps, a little search bar. Uh, and there's a lot of sort of, you know, scrolling and complexity. 
And each of us has a million apps and most of them we don't use. So we actually think that with a large language model AI, with generative AI, we have an opportunity to leapfrog where developers who build apps for frame, Noah would know that these apps exist and that these are the contexts that these apps are pointed toward. So there might be an app that's for translating in a restaurant, you know, when you're looking at a menu. And so when I walk into the restaurant and the menu is in a different language, uh, Noah, through my frame, might very well proactively suggest to me that, hey, I see that you're looking at a menu and clearly I know that you're in a new country and this language is not the language you're familiar with. There's a great app written by a developer named Gabrielle and you know, people love it for these reasons. If you want, I can update your device and we can be up and running with the app to start translating this menu. It's something that's contextual and it's pushed at me in the moment when I need it. I didn't have to go digging around in a million apps or, you know, um, do all the heavy lift. The model did the heavy lift for me because it has perfect knowledge of what developers have built and it brings it to you at the right time at the right place. So we do see an opportunity to make apps discoverable and useful to people in that way. If you enjoyed this conversation, you can read the rest of the interview on XRI Spotlight by clicking the first link in the episode description. If you enjoy it, make sure to subscribe to the newsletter to get weekly interviews like this one directly in your inbox and access to a list of tools and apps that allow you to experience Gaussian splatting in VR on Quest or Vision Pro. If reading is not your thing, you can keep watching here on YouTube. Till next time.